Good day, everyone. My name is Loïc Chamoy. I'm Business Development Manager for Energy Storage and Hybrid Systems at Vartila. I've been working with Vartila for almost uh, 10 years now, uh, and I've been involved in, in numer numerous uh, mining projects uh, all over the world. And I'm extremely happy today to, to share a bit more about these very interesting topics, microgrids for mines, share about um, our own experience, and also what is according to us the key to the success of a, a microgrid operations. Decreasing the cost of, of, of power generation, de decreasing your mining costs, increasing the, the share of renewables into your uh, power generation, and, and moving to a more sustainable um, mining are topics which have been extensively discussed over the last years, and, and especially at this very same conference here, Energy and Mines. The good news is that today we are also able to share some insights from constructed projects, from projects or, or which are under construction. And some of those slides, some of those business cases have turned into, into execution, actually. What, what did not change over, over the last years is actually your, your main um, criteria, the, the most important things when it comes to microgrid operations. The first one being that you need reliability. So any outage in the power generation can cause huge lost revenues and can cause damages also to your mining equipment. So reliability should and has remained and should remain the number one uh, priority for, for any microgrid operation. The second thing is that there is a, a constant need of, of decreasing the cost of operations for your mine and decreasing the cost of power. So we're going to see, you know, what are the means to do that and the most, uh, the, the most effective way to achieve that. And also, um, we need to move to a more sustainable operation to reduce the fuel consumption, to reduce uh, the greenhouse gases emissions. And I'd like to share a bit about our own experience as Vatsila um, in the mining sector. So Vatsila has uh, more than two gigawatt installed power capacity at mining sites and 200 megawatt of that um, in, in Australia. And over the last uh, years, we have also integrated some new solutions to those mining sites. So first, first example is the Esakani gold mine in Burkina Faso, where we have um, constructed a 15 megawatt PV plant to be integrated into an existing genset plant. And this PV uh, plant was constructed for Total Eren, the IPP, um, and themselves they are having an offtake agreement with I am Gold, um, who is the mine operator. This PV plant has a fuel saver, enabled to save 6 million liters of fuel per year, it, and that's equivalent to 19,000 tons of CO2. If we want to take you know, this microgrid um, and operations and the renewable integration to the next level. Well, integrating energy storage then is, is the natural path. And actually we do have a project in construction uh, in Mali at the Fekola Gold Mine. The owner is, is B2 Gold and Vatsila is delivering a 15 megawatt, a 17 megawatt, 15 megawatt hour um, energy storage system and the energy management system. And these energy management systems will also um, integrate 13 megawatt PV power and also um, 60 megawatt of, of thermal power. And it's important to say that those, those systems are, are not subsidized. So the, the cost, the falling cost of renewables also and the falling cost of battery storage enabled that these uh, enable to have very shorter and shorter payback time for those systems that basically the business model of having renewable or energy storage as a fuel saver flies by itself. And especially for energy storage, we have witnessed so payback times as low as two to four, five years. Um, of course, it's very depending on, you know, your, your site location, what's the cost of your fuel, but, um, Today, this is the main difference to, to what was um, to, to what was the, the state of the projects of this hybrid project a few years ago. 
And if we have a look at you know, what, what a hybrid system looks like, so here is a representation of a hybrid system on the island of Graciosa in the Azores. And as such, it, it's not a, you know, a mining site, but they have exactly the same constraints, whether it's an island microgrid or, or a, a mine microgrid. Basically, you need to have a huge uh, uh, reliability on, on your power system, and also you need to have the lower cost of generation. So that's, that's pretty easy, these two key parameters. And why, why is it a kind of a complex system still? Is because you are integrating different assets, and each asset has its own operating constraints. So for example, um, let's take the, the, the thermal gensets. You have, for example, the minimum load to consider. You have um, the run rate capacity. You have the different efficiency, starting time, and, and, and several other operating parameters. Then on the renewable side, you have to cope with the intermittency, the run rate up and down, which can happen, unforecasted. You can have the trip of an inverter, and so on and so on. And still, with all of these constraints, as an operator, what you'd like to see is just a stable operation. And it's just someone who managed to integrate all of this and dispatch your power um, in a very optimized way. And according to us, it's, it's the key here, it's one of the key to have um, you know, a successful and also optimized microgrid operation is to have an EMS, an energy management system, which is actually crunching all those constraints, which is uh, taking load forecasting for renewable, which is taking load forecast for, for uh, energy consumption in order to have still deliver this extremely stable frequency and in order to maximize the renewable penetration. Because in the end, the more renewable you, you, you are able to integrate, well, the less fuel you, you, you'll be consuming. And if we have a look at um, the value of the EMS as such, is extremely small. I mean, on an overall hybrid project, the value money-wise of the EMS is extremely small. The liabilities are very high for this EMS because it's actually the EMS who is responsible for uh, the whole performance of, of the asset, of the whole hybrid plant. If we have a look at the, at the systems which have the hybrid systems which, which are installed now in operation or in construction over the world, well, we, we still see that the renewable penetration is somewhere in the range of 20, 25% top, but not, not more than that. Um, and of course, it will, this number will, will increase over the years. But today, the reality is still that most of your generation costs arise from the from your thermal plant, from your gensets, and in order, well, that's a very that that may sound like a kind of basic advice, but if you want to save money on your generation costs, then having high efficiency gensets is kind of the easy way to go. So. Uh, Let's imagine you have a fleet of gensets with a low performing efficiency, like uh, below 40% or so. And you switch to picture yourself now having 43, 44% net efficiency. And this 10% fuel efficiency, which, which, you, which you have, this 10% difference is also translating directly 10% on your fuel bill. You have 10% less on your fuel bill at the end of the year. And actually, Vartila developed a, a modular system integrating those medium uh, gensets, medium speed gensets, with, which with high efficiency, but also very low life cycle costs. And this solution called the modular block is extremely scalable. Um, and also because it's very, um, it has a high degree of, of prefabrication, it's very fast to deploy on site. So um, it will be deployed uh, for the first time on the Siama Gold Mine in Mali uh, for the owner um, Resolute Mining based in Perth. And it allows Resolute Mining to 
basically install the, the power which they need at the beginning of life to the mine without you know considering too much any any uh, projections of, over what they would need in two three or ten years uh, basically they install what they need now and they are able to easily expand the thermal side uh, of the power plant as, as time goes by and as the need as their need um, is increasing so we have the same here same scalability for thermal plant as what we have for energy storage by increasing inverters and modules or, or for a PV plant, for example, by increasing the, also the amount of, of PV modules. So in our view, um, a powerful EMS, which is able to, to guarantee the, the stability and also the high penetration of renewable and also a highly flexible, scalable, but high efficiency genset are, are the, to us two keys to um, really decrease the cost of your, of your microgrid operation and um, also decrease your greenhouse gases emissions. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and you had some, some good takeaways. Thank you very much for listening. Um, the whole Bartzilla team remain uh, here available during the conference and, and you can contact us afterwards of, as well. Um, and we'd be very happy to uh, kick off some good discussions around your microgrids, your challenges, the difference you have uh, on, on your operation. And uh, please feel free to contact us. I wish you a, a, good, a good conference for the remaining presentations. Thank you.